All right, I saw some racy movies and I thought, you know, it's not real sunny out. I'm not going to use the sunglasses, but there are some people out here and they're going to see me talking about this stuff and I'm going to get in trouble. Okay, so anyways, Enter the Void. Watch this on uh, Netflix, Instant Streaming. Uh, there really isn't a lot to say. I mean, you get a lot of flash, a lack of substance. You got this guy, he's a small-time drug dealer living in Tokyo. He's white. Uh, he just recently picked up some book on reincarnation Buddhism stuff. And he gets killed during a drug deal. Oh yeah, there's spoilers. So he gets shot in the back by Tokyo police, which would not do that. And uh, while he dies, I mean the whole camera had really been stuck with him this whole time. He dies and then we kind of see flashbacks of his life from his perspective. There's some really cool ideas here. This is from director Gaspar Noe. Don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but you know I try. And he usually makes these movies with uh, incredibly, uh, I don't know, jarring, exploitative sexual uh, encounters in them. There's a lot of that going on here too. I mean, particularly from this guy's sister, stripper prostitute, played by Paz de Horta, who is frequently naked and everything. But we see everything from his perspective, uh, flashbacks from his life. A lot of times the camera is fixed behind him during these adolescent bits, but he has some uh, obsession with breastfeeding from his mom, and he gets to explore inside other people, kind of like he's floating around. And the camera's doing some really cool stuff. I'm sure there's some computer effects involved, uh, some editing trickery, but it looks really nice. Uh, I think it could be said this is one of the nicest looking awful movies. <laughs> uh, because there's some really cool ideas. Like even when it's in first person view, I like how when he blinks, the camera goes black and he's looking in the mirror and that's how you see that that's what's happening. But it's really a drug trip movie. Oh hey, it's so cool to experience drugs. Let's zoom in on this light and then zoom out of some other object in another scene. Not really related. Like it's one thing to zoom into an incandescent light bulb, then that take us to another scene where there's an incandescent light bulb. Now it'd be like, zoom into this teapot. Now we're inside a lamp, whatever. He then gets to uh, be reborn from his like best friend and his sister hooking up. And then he gets to suck on her and I'm telling you, that's that's your movie right there. It's incredibly long too. We're looking at two and a half hours for a movie that you can check out of easily. I mean, like you put this down after an hour and a half, you seem to seem like you've really got a whole movie right there showing the backwards how he died. Not that any of it's very interesting because this guy never had anything good to say. I mean, our protagonist who can speak English has maybe 20 lines in the whole film. That's pretty ass weak stuff. So, what would I rank this? I mean, I, I realize I've given other movies as bad of scores lately. Like, The Lookalike. The Lookalike, one and a half out of four stars. I give this one and a half out of four stars too. But it's fairly innovative. It's from 2009, doing a lot of stuff you don't see today. There were things I liked about it. It's better made than the lookalike. But, you know, sometimes you need to show some restraint and some good taste.